Hi, I'm Dr. Mark, and I'm a voice teacher and stage director. Whether you're a professional pop or rock star that's wanting to take your performance to a next level, or you're just interested in making your car singing or shower singing easier and more comfortable and fun, I can help you get there. I'll start doing that today by reacting to and teaching you singing and performing tips that we can learn from the top performers around the world. Today I'm going to be reacting to and teaching from three different performances of Roberto Alaña. Here we go. S'enfuit déjà, oublier le temps des malentendus et le temps perdu. À savoir comment oublier ces heures qui tuaient parfois à coup de pourquoi. Ok, how do you know here who the center of attention is? Well, it's not just because the camera keeps focusing on her. It's, imagine that you were in the live audience here and you didn't have that luxury. Well, there's a few things. Obviously, Roberto Alaña has turned towards her. Second of all, she's on a higher level. She's up above him, which gives her more status. She's also wearing a white dress, which that white draws our attention to her and his black mutes the hotter colors on him. So we aren't drawn to him. And she's also in a really unique position, meaning she's up on top of a piano, which the, the spectacle of that draws our attention there. So that's how they're accomplishing, putting her the center of attention here. It's, it, it'll be interesting to see how they shift that when they go to Roberto. Le cœur du bonheur Ne me quitte pas Ne me quitte pas Ne me quitte pas me quitte pas Moi, je t'offrirai des perles de pluie venues de pays où il ne pleut pas Je creuserai la terre jusqu'après ma mort pour couvrir ton corps doré de lumière It's actually really interesting. They don't do a whole lot other than she looks at him and then the camera does the rest of the work because this is mostly for the audience out here in TV land. So go figure. They don't really adjust their position. They don't really make him higher status. They keep her as the highest status person there on stage. Interesting. Very cool. Je ferai un domaine où l'amour sera roi, où l'amour sera loi, où tu seras reine. Ne me quitte pas, ne me quitte pas, ne me quitte pas, non, ne me quitte pas, ne me quitte pas. Okay, so what's the difference in their two sounds here? Well, hers a little more collapsed and back, the placement is a little further back. It's for that softer, more sultry sound that she's getting. It's a sound that's conditioned to working with a mic and so she doesn't have to work very hard at it. She doesn't make herself work it really hard at it. It also keeps her face and eyes relatively relaxed and also gives that kind of French feeling to the whole thing. Here with Roberto Alagna, as an opera singer, that's coming out here. Even though it's not as rounded as operatic in nature he is singing into the mic and he's singing relatively light he's keeping the placement relatively bright and forward not a whole lot of roundness and back but still there's a lot more ring in there there's a lot more openness in this resonant space and back that vibrato is a little bit more consistent and there's just in general more chiaroscuro in his voice more presence in his voice than hers go figure he's an operatic superstar She's a star in her own right, 
and their voices are trained to kind of do different things. So is that right or wrong? Is one good or bad? No, they're just different. And they're lovely together. I really love the contrast. I love how they sound together. Both voices seem to suit this song really well. Je t'inventerai des mots insensés que tu comprendras. Je te parlerai de ces amants-là qui ont vu deux fois leur cœur s'embraser. Je te raconterai l'histoire de ce roi mort de n'avoir pas pu. Okay, it got much more speech-like. He collapsed this resonant space. He wasn't rounding it as much. He wasn't putting as much of the forward sinus resonance in it. It wasn't as buzzy. He was matching her style a little bit more. That's why all of a sudden his sound sounded different. So he's kind of weaving in and out of her style a little bit, which is really interesting. Fascinating. Te rencontrer Ne me quitte pas Ne me quitte pas Ne me quitte pas No, ne me quitte pas On a vu souvent Okay, wow. Both in this moment, this resonant space opens. It goes to that ass space. Hers is very ah like in back. His has a little bit more oh, tallness in with that ah. It's a little more diamond shape. Um, but wow. And she's now matching his kind of home world in the operatic realm. How cool is that? She went right back down to class. He's still relatively open and back there. Consequently, his voice is standing out over hers. Je ne vais plus pleurer, je ne vais plus parler. His voice has a lot more consistent vibrato too. A te regarder danser. Again, an operatic thing. Her is a little more straight tone, a little more speech like, more collapsed. Chanter et puis rire. Laisse-moi devenir l'ombre de ton ombre. L'ombre de ton Beautiful. I really loved watching them both kind of go in and out and weave around each other. Really, really cool. Um, their eyes, we were zoomed in on them a lot. Did you believe it? Do you believe that they meant what they were saying? I did most of the time. What actually kind of made me not believe it 100% is that it was too consistent. There weren't moments where I saw really unique ideas change. It just stayed kind of too sad, too consistently. There wasn't deeper versions of sad. They didn't have a moment where they kind of got a little more bittersweet. It just kind of stayed in that same place. So, not saying that it was bad, but I would have liked a little bit more of a roller coaster in there. Again, this more even keeled, nuanced type of expression fits the genre as well, though. So, let's go on to the next one.
I could go on and talk about this a lot. This is one of my favorite scenes. It is amazing. It's worth watching the whole thing. We're going to kind of skip ahead and skip around a little bit here. But what I want to draw your attention to here is that all their action, all the big movement, everything that's going on starts with their eyes. You see the idea being born in their eyes and their face comes along for the ride and then their hands, their feet, and then they're moving, right? It's not all of a sudden their hands and feet are moving and then their eyes come along for the ride. No, there's a really specific order. And that's important because that's normal human body language. Try it right now. Try to be expressive with your feet before you do anything with your face or eyes. Yeah, wait, what? So try just walking somewhere without your eyes going there first. It looks really weird. And it feels really weird. It looks awkward. It becomes really apparent that the cycle here that we need to follow for it to look natural and real and believable all starts with those eyes. The eyes have to shift direction on the last note or syllable of the preceding phrase. Thanks, Richard Crittenden, for that bit of gloriousness. And once we start to shift our eyes on that last note or syllable, then we can go through the entire cycle of gestures. We can go through eyes, breath, face, neck, torso, arms, turning from the hips, legs, and then actually making movement back to stillness again. It's so cool. We'll talk about more in another video. Let's keep going. Notice the nuanced face, facial gestures. He's really writing. He's thinking about what he's writing. He's not just pretending to. He's thinking about what he's writing. Otherwise, we don't get those nuanced facial gestures. I love the playfulness there. So fun. All these little details make it so believable. So fun. Okay, so what's making this operatic sound here, this sound that we associate with opera? This taller position in back, the more consistent vibrato, and they're not singing with mics, so they have to make sure that that sound is really working efficiently. There's not a whole lot of adding extra grit or other moments like that in this because the orchestra is relatively large and they have the whole rest of the show to sing. So they really have to be judicious and keep that voice working efficiently and consistent throughout the entire piece. They don't have a mic that they can then make sure that they're singing really easy and just introducing a little grit, but doing it easily. No, everything they're doing is a little bit higher in terms of threshold of dynamics because they're singing over an orchestra and need to be heard. So that's another part of it is the consistency of sound. It also lends that sound we associate with opera. It is also a little less speech-like here. Even these moments where they're not in the middle of an aria and they are more speech-like, on the continuum, pop, we can get really almost speaking, basically just speaking on pitch for specific durations. Here, even in the more speech-like moments, it's much more on the lyric singing side of the continuum there. So that's another big difference here. You'll notice though, that you aren't seeing tension, you aren't seeing grabbing, you aren't seeing pulling. They're just singing with a little more effort and keeping that resonant space open, keeping the tall space there. With Roberto, there's a little bit more ass space in the back that keeps it that forward bite there. With hers, she really works hard on keeping that tall to keep the richness in there and make sure it doesn't get overly shrill like it sometimes can in soprano voices. And it's really, really gorgeous. Okay, let's skip forward. Let us 
gens Je veux que tu sois ma femme Tu de toute mon âme <rire> oh, Okay, one of the reasons I love these two singers, I love, love Roberto and Anna Trebko, is that they are two of the most believable opera singers out there in their acting. We forget that the timing has to be impeccable, that there's not really a lot of fudge room. They have to somehow make all this precise timing sing natural and spontaneous. How do they do it? Again, it comes back to this loud note or syllable idea, comes with our eyes moving on the previous note or syllable, and it also comes from them being 100% in this moment, and it also comes from them identifying action music moments. You'll notice in this music, there's so much going on. If they can tie their actions to specific music moments, that also helps us believe it. It helps us integrate everything together into one expressive whole. Also, they're letting themselves play. They're letting themselves respond in a spontaneous way. They're so in sync with this music. They know it so well that they know what's coming up and can make sure that they're having an idea in their head. They're seeing things, they're giving each other things to react to that will make the coming music make sense. Really letting yourself listen to that music and really think what these characters would do that would make the coming music make sense is the absolute key in making something that is so timed, so specific, so seemingly locked in and rigid seem spontaneous and natural. And they are two of the best at doing this. Love it. Je vais la porter. Voilà des fleurs qui sont fort belles. Et d'où te vient ce bouquet, Manon Je ne sais pas. Comment tu ne sais pas On va tirer de courir Dans la bonne heure, il faut la lancer dans Comme il était chelé, je l'ai pas. Je pense que tu n'es pas jeune. Non I think the other thing we can learn from these two is to not take yourself so seriously. They're just playing around. They're doing what two playful young lovers would do in this moment. And it makes it so fun, so believable. One of the problems we get into is that we get so worried what the audience will think and that we're worried about our status, our image, that we're not willing to just be playful and be real people. Here, they're about being these two people in this moment, not worried about this audience because in their world right now, this audience doesn't exist. It's just the two of them being playful and having fun. Can you be playful and have fun if you don't do that in everyday life? No, so go be playful and have fun today. Si tienes un hondo penal, piensa en mí. What makes this different from when he's singing operatically? Not a whole lot, it's actually really similar. He's singing a little bit more aspirally, there's a little bit more breath in there. He's singing a little lighter. He's really relying on the shape. You'll notice here that across the board, Roberto loves to cover here. He actually doesn't do the upper two smile a lot. One of the reasons is, is it keeps that sound warmer, a little richer, a less brash and bright. Are there times when it comes out? Yes. He's keeping it really speech-like here in the front jaw, but in the back, he's keeping that really tall open space. It really is more an O in the back right now for him. Little bit of ass side space, but really pretty tall. Si tienes ganas de llorar, piensa en mí. Hear that tenor sob in there? Ma, ma, la. He uses that all the time, all over the place. It's really characteristic. It gets our sympathies going. It sounds sobby. It keeps that forward there. It gets that breath really consistent and connected. One thing you can learn from him today is try singing with a little bit more of a sob, a whine, a cry in it. It's actually really efficient sound making if it's done well. And it ties us back to our infancy, which is probably the time when we made the most efficient sound we've ever made. We could cry for long periods of time, make tremendous noise, and do it day after day after day after day. There's something to be learned there. Notice 
notice his mouth shape here shows really well. He's got that A ah plus the tall O. Ah, you can see the A ah shape pulling the side to side a little bit, and you can see the height in the back. That's something that makes his sound really unique. Pavarotti has a lot more A in it. It's just more like a box shape. His really has this diamond shape in it that gets us the richness up top and the brightness side to side. <laughs> So when you're watching here, oh, we finally get the teeth come out here. How about that? So part of it is because he's smiling. As we're looking here, he's not having to sing with this really bright, full, rich sound. He can really color it, and that's part of the style here, right? Is this really warm, rich, dramatic, slidey type of sound that's really romantic. He's rocking it, loving it. He's so calm, relaxed, romantic, and can't help kind of being schmoozed by the whole thing. Breathiness there. Cuando llores, también piensa en mí. Cuando quieras de quitarme la vida, no la quiero para nada. Okay, notice how it went more towards an ah, a little bit of these, more of these teeth come out and that sound gets a little bit brighter. We lose some of the warmth and richness and tallness. Go figure. But I know. Hey, did you see any stress, any tension there? Not really. If there was anywhere where that there was tension. It might have been in that tongue. If you saw back there, you would notice that there are moments where that tongue wanted to pull back, especially when up into that higher covered place. And are there reasons why he's doing that? Yeah, it gets a specific sound. And am I seeing a resultant tension in there? No, not really. The breath flow is really consistent. We have this warm, really rich, romantic, sobby, sigh sound. And even here, he just stays so in the moment and is totally schmoozing and romantic in how he's presenting himself body language wise. Totally fits the style. Gorgeous, lovely sound of the entire ensemble. Love it. So what can you do today? Try singing with a little bit of the cry, the sob. It's going to keep it forward and it's also going to keep that space open in the back. What can you do performance wise? Let your face be malleable. Make sure you're not carrying any tension in your jaw and around your eyes. Really get everything moving, those articulators, those eyes, so that they're free to move and be expressive with whatever emotion belongs with this song and these words. If you want a voice lesson, a performance coaching, or want me to work with you or your group to help you sing easier or perform at a consistently higher level, book a time with me at mrperformingartstudio.com. I look forward to working with you online.